the founder's edition of Path of Titans released on Nintendo Switch last week. If you're not sure what it is, well, it's an MMO, except you get to play as a dinosaur. The game will eventually be completely free to play on Switch, but obviously you can pay a bit of money and get a few dinosaurs early. So let's look at the game, the performance, and kind of my early impressions of, uh, well, <laughs> whether it's worth you playing. Is it a fresh new take on the MMO genre, or is Goldblum gonna be saying, That is one big pile of Well, let's find out. Path of Titans is already out on some other platforms as well as mobile, and with the developers working on an Unreal 5 engine update, on the right system it can look beautiful. The Nintendo Switch version, um, well it's not looking quite that beautiful is it? It's targeting 30 FPS but there's an uncapped frame rate so that during the tutorial areas that will exceed up to around about 60 FPS. Because of the nature of the Unreal Engine, depending on the lighting effects and time of day, the performance can change quite drastically. In foggy situations, it's 30 without any problems and sometimes even higher. However, at other times of the day, if there's multiple dynamic lights, it can really bring the performance down. Then there's the issue of server latency. Sometimes servers were absolutely fine and and at other times they really did struggle. During these times you'll notice rubber banding as you move about and when it comes to combat it does make it very difficult. Path of Titans uses native crossplay so you can be playing against people on console or PC and there's voice chat here but no one really seems to use it. As far as image quality goes we're not quite in Ark Survival Evolved territory there are some nice animations here the resolution isn't appalling and the models can be quite impressive. The game spread over a huge map, but so many effects have been cut out. Things like screen space reflections and real-time reflections, dynamic lights, high quality shadows. You can see why they've done it to try and maintain that 30 frames per second, but an oil painting it most certainly is not. And to get it up to a pleasant state, it's going to need quite a bit of patchwork in my opinion. It looks and runs better on my phone. Now aside from the dedicated servers, there's also community servers, but these can only be accessed once you've purchased one of the dinosaur packs. So let's have a little look at in-app purchases. There are three different editions of Path of Titans. You've got the free one, which isn't out yet. You've got the standard founders pack, which is £26.99, and that gives you 500 coins that you can use on cosmetics. And then you've got the Path of Titans Deluxe Deluxe Founders Pack, which is £53.99, and that gives you 1,200 Path of Titans coins, which again you can use to unlock cosmetics, and all the backer skins. They unlock dinosaurs as well, but I'm not entirely sure how many you get. I got four unlocked for the review code but it says 26 playable dinosaurs, whether or not that means 26 unlocked or whether that's just how many there are in the game, I'm not sure. What I will say though is that if you go out to buy the currency, I think I worked out it was gonna cost me 26 pound 99 or something just to buy the T-Rex. And as far as something being pay to win goes, the bigger the dinosaur, the more damage they do, These the, the larger carnivores are almost unstoppable if you're a smaller character and you can just buy the biggest one off the bat. Now the game isn't, fully about that. We'll go into that in the gameplay section. It's not an ideal solution really, but what about the gameplay? How does it actually play? So you choose whether you want to be a herbivore or a carnivore and also decide whether you want to play single player or online. Single player is essentially identical to the online experience except you have no interaction with any dinosaurs at all other than your own, which makes it essentially redundant off the bat. There's no artificial intelligence in the game so you won't find other dinosaurs roaming the land. So let's just forget single player exists and move on to multiplayer. Path of Titans is essentially your traditional 1995 MMO. You start out by creating your herbivore or carnivore, you choose the different patterns on it and in fact the design system is actually quite nice. You can shed your skins during the game and change colours if you've purchased new ones and its strongest aspect is by far the design of these dinosaurs. Once you've chosen you'll give it a name and you'll pop into the server. Servers seem to be quite well populated they can range up to 200 players on Nintendo Switch, but the average so far I've found is about 90 different dinosaurs per server. If your connection's good, then things are generally okay, and upon a new game and a new character, you'll start out as a hatchling in the tutorial area. The tutorial segments are straightforward enough, they teach you everything you need to know before you dive into the world, and there's not a huge amount to know. Starting out as a hatchling, you won't have any abilities, but the premise goes that as you perform quests, you'll gradually develop and grow more mature, and you can purchase an assignment 
find different moves using the in-game currency. But don't worry because that part is actually gained through doing stuff. What stuff exactly? Well, the questing. Now over on the right hand side of the screen are several different quests. They may be as simple as visiting a location, but once you reach an area, you'll very often get location specific missions. How on earth can a dinosaur carry out missions you might ask? Well, he can pick things up in his mouth and then he can carry them and put them down. Uh, yeah, that's... Uh... You, there's other missions as well, but when you're playing solo, the vast majority involve either picking something up and putting it down, or just picking it up, like clearing out the lake of these weeds, or hunting down a badger. And because dinosaurs aren't running around with rucksacks on their back, although by this stage I really wish they were, it means you have to do individual collection. So one mushroom at a time, back and forward, back and forward. And unfortunately it's just not fun. I'm sure there were other types of missions they could have gone for, and there are more in here. If you can find a group of friends, and there's a whole social system here, you can then go on hunting missions together. And as with any MMO, if, if you've got a group of you, it's way more enjoyable. But going out solo into this world, you essentially have the choice of carrying out those little quests to evolve your dinosaur, or bumping into other players who inevitably will have paid for the T-Rex or the larger dinosaur, and will find it highly amusing to headbutt you to death. Don't worry though, because you don't lose everything, because, uh, well, you haven't got anything. <laughs> And much of the survival aspect really comes from just making sure you're drinking and eating enough. Aside from these missions and hunting other players, by holding down on the D-pad you can communicate with other dinosaurs. It's another mildly confusing system as you might have a heart icon, I'm guessing that means that's a, a greeting or a hello. But when I receive one of those, how do I know that? Unless I've learned the calls of every single dinosaur, there's no heart icon that appears above their head. For all I know, they could be telling me to go down the shops to pick up a bag of meat, but who knows? Maybe there's a system I've entirely missed. Then we've got the waypoint stones. Now, these allow you to draw other players towards you. So if you create a friendship in the chat, you can team up and then call those players over to your location. I did invite a few people, no one came, sad face. And finally, no dinosaur game would be complete without some form of home cave. And you'll be thrilled to hear that you can spend the in-game experience to buy different decorations for your cave, such as this fetching tree. Then when you've got a group of you, you could all hang out together, gazing at the lifeless walls. <laughs> Movement in the game is actually surprisingly good. You can click the button in to sprint around. There's a finite control by using the left trigger, which means you can spin on the spot. And what's very cool is that everyone's dinosaur has the head track the camera movement. So if you're stalking someone, and they turn to look at you. All you see is the dinosaur's head turn to look. It's very nice. The movement uses a stamina system, which essentially means that you're gonna get exhausted, but you can lay down on the ground and even have a little snooze. The world itself has a day and night system. And as far as map size goes, it's pretty huge. It's just, there's not enough to do in it. I mean, I'm not expecting Grand Theft Auto. You know, I don't expect a tiny little dino gym and you go down or, or I don't know, a pizza hut and you go there and start eating pizzas to build up your size. I'm not, I'm not after that but there has to be more in the world than what's currently there. It is literally run around either solo or with a group and fetch things and then fight other dinosaurs. And while that might sound amazing, the map's so big, in my maybe five hours of play so far, I think I've seen four people, three of them killed me, and one of them ran away into the water. <laughs> so right now, I probably would not suggest you pick up the Founders Pack, unless you're a huge dinosaur fan and you just have to get it. I'd say it's safe to wait for the free-to-play version and give it a try then. If you have any questions about the game, then do pop them down in the description. I think I've managed to answer most things, but yeah, let me know and I'll try and answer them. A thanks to all of you that enjoy the channel and to our new patrons, patrons, patreons, man, my brain, for all things Switch, all the time. Keep your Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya.